I'm gonna watch more of it because that's I'm you know you know my joint, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna watch more of it. And obviously these guys dug it. The unusuals. There's a small TV show you may or may not be watching called Rescue Me. Dan and I, big fans of it early on. Although you're not watching, I heard this season's amazing and you're nice, aren't watching well, it. Well, right? it, it, it lost me, quote unquote pun intended, it lost me uh -huh. in mid-season when it was great, 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 wow, this is really bad and I stopped watching, may have gotten better again, but I haven't been watching, you, have, you guys haven't been watching, have I'm, you? I'll talk about my review. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is my uh, review of the unusual. Right, right, right. Well, so the guys behind that, Dennis Leary and Peter Tolan, Tolan? Peter Tolan and Peter Dennis Tolan and Dennis Leary. I, mean, I think Leary. other people, but I a know lot of part of it. A lot of other people, but, you know, anyway. The Unusuals is a cop drama uh, with, starring um, Adam Goldberg, uh, uh, Amber Tamblin, which is interesting to see her back from Joan of Arcadia, uh, Harold Perrineau, is it Harold mm -hmm. Perrineau from Lost? Mm -hmm. uh, and another guy from Oz, the guy who's the, uh, the warden uh, on the TV show Oz. Anyway, New York City cops. How to explain it is, is kind of hard to explain because I don't really know what it is trying to be. Quirky? Maybe. Uh, Jeff, what do you think of the, of the show? I, I agree with you that the, the tough thing about the show is that it has a very weird sensibility. It, it, at once, it wants to be kind of a comedy with almost the scrubs of cop shows, but it doesn't go as far in the comedy direction, has some very real moments that it wants to find too, and it sort of straddles this line. And there's also this layer of uh, almost lost or fringe-esque, there's something greater going on, mystery show happening. Um, so it's really straddling a lot of different lines and makes the, at least the first episode feel very strange and like, I, I, I don't know what this is. But I will say, I like it. And I don't like it as much as Southland, but I'm gonna keep watching this show. I, I want this show to, to, to prove itself to me because it's not great yet, but there's seeds there of like, man, you know, this is kind of different and I give it a lot of credit for trying something new. And, and I'm, I'm rooting for it to succeed. And I, and I think I probably liked it more than you guys, mm -hmm. I'm gonna guessing, but I'm not sure where it sits yeah. yet, but I, I, I think it has promise. Interesting, Dan, what'd you think? Okay, well I uh, need to use this time to expound, expound. It's okay, just expound, choose words. Embellish on my love for <laughs> Rescue Me, seasons one and two. Love that show. It, is a, it had a quirk to it. It was a little bit over the top, but always grounded in the truth of the community of what, of, of that community, of the New York Fire Department. And they had a job, I mean, they had, they had a show, a cop show before Rescue Me, Peter Tolan and Dennis Larry called The Job. Oh yeah, I That's remember why that. mistake happened. Um, <laughs> That's so, why mistake happened. Which is, which, is, which, which is why I find it peculiar for them to sort of return to this material, but maybe they feel that now we're ready for a show like that, that is a quirky cop show. Rescue Me, also shot on video, grounded in a reality, but a little quirky. The later seasons of Rescue Me got totally over the top, lost for me, it's, stuff that I can relate to. But you aren't watching ground. it now, so you don't know. And I'm not, no, I stopped watching because it got so crazy. Okay. Um, so this show is that, losing the, the documentary style aesthetic and all quirk and very much like Scrubs, and the stuff that I didn't really like about what was happening to Rescue Me. Um, I don't really like the show, despite really starting to enjoy in the second episode, the dynamic between Adam Goldberg, mm -hmm, yeah. who's a cop Agreed. who uh, feel, might be dying in six months, and his partner is, played by Harold Perrineau, mm -hmm. is a cop who is a, has a family history of dying at the age of 42, of which he now is. And these guys are partners, and their dynamic is really enjoyable. It's, it's, it's the only really part of the show that I enjoy, but it's really nice, and it, it does make me curious to, to watch more episodes. Interesting. I, it, it's really funny that you brought that up, because that was going to be my, the only thing that I think was, is salvageable in this series for me is that relationship. Because that, I want to see it as, see, I mean, it's just, it's so perfect. It's a guy who doesn't care if he lives or dies and a guy who believes he's going to die in this and year. And really cares. And really cares. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's 
perfect. Like it is just it's lethal weapon. Perfect. It is lethal first weapon, of all, basically. Let's just say that. Um, but, actually, that's funny. It yeah. is lethal weapon. Um, my problem is that this this show doesn't know what it wants to be. It's right. part mash. Um, with the sort of weird, funny voiceover of like you know that that Area 52 is sort of like the the guy radio over the over the you know injecting this weird humor, but it doesn't inject. You mean Car 54? No, he's done no, Area no. 52. Uh, Mash always uh, had the guy over the loudspeaker uh, that would sorry. have like these little funny speak. PA things, yeah. um, but then also it would have these deadly serious, like trying to be really gritty serious cop drama events that were unfolding, but then offset them with these sort of, you know, vague attempts at at really wacky humor. But there's something bold about that. There's it's very bold. I, mean, I, I, I feel like there's a lot of shows. I mean, I don't know that it, I would, I, I would compete that I don't, I, or debate that I don't know if, <laughs> word, today is not my word day. broken. <laughs> my dictionary is broken. broken. So don't, you update your dictionary. bad day. I would just say that, you know, I think that is what, it's not that it doesn't know what it wants to be. They want to be, an offbeat, quirky show that, I, I mean, that's a lot of shows. You yeah, want to oh, be okay. quirky well, and serious. In that serious, case, you know? it, it knows what it wants to be, and but what you're it wants not to enjoying... be is, is, is not picking a side. And that, that to me, is yeah, I don't want But don't you like some things that are, some? like Wes Anderson stuff is quirky and, and ridiculous, yet also serious at the same, and there's some really sweet, tender stuff. I mean, yeah. I mean maybe I just a, don't think that it works in yeah. this situation. Well, that's what I'm saying, yeah. But either way, um, you know, I did warm up to the fact to this this great relationship with these, between these two characters, but overall, I was sort of dis disappointed with both of the shows. Can I bring up a couple of things week. real fast? Because I don't think we'll get we'll get a chance to to talk about them. Um, I'm really digging Better Off Ted, and surprised how much I'm liking Parks and Recreation. I wow, seen I saw a little bit of Parks and Recreation the other day, and it just looks horrible. I, I, I'm really liking it, uh, and I thought it would be it would be like just a bad Office ripoff, and I thought Better Off Ted would be a, kind of a bad Thirty Rock ripoff. Rip -off. But they're both really I haven't watched Better shows. Off Ted, but I've heard good things. Yeah. So. All right, well, we'll talk later. <laughs>